dating app Bumble to ban users for body shaming. It says, this is an uh, article by The Guardian. It says, the app updates guidelines and will use algorithms to flag derogatory language, mocking physical appearance. And so if you don't know how Bumble works, I've, I've never used Bumble before. And so I actually had to look it up. So Bumble is basically a dating app. It goes on to say, it says, women always make the first move. If she doesn't initiate a conversation within 24 hours, the connection expires. Men cannot initiate a conversation with women. However, they can show that they're especially interested in her by using a daily 24 hour uh, extended feature. So basically women are the ones who are uh, making the moves as it was. Typically men are the ones who are walking up to women, either they're cold approaching or they're using dating apps where they basically swipe through pictures, you make a connection, you have a conversation. And so this announcement, it says, comes amid growing concern about the abuse of dating apps. Uh, it says one in four of people in the UK have been body shamed online uh, on the dating app or social media, according to a Bumble survey. And so basically, this is something that is targeting men, men who typically do not like women that they personally deem as not be having the body shape that they want. And so they verbalize that because of the way that they're particularly shaped or, or particularly the way the individual looks that they're not attracted to them, whether they do this in a way that is a bit more upfront and a bit rude, you know, there's no proof. They don't show any sort of information or examples um, of what they're referring to. They're just referring to what they deem as body shame, which is basically, I'm not attracted to the way you look. I don't, I don't like your body shape. And so this is basically a one-sided sort of new guideline for men who particularly don't like women that they deem as perhaps being overweight, which is particularly what the article is referring to. It says it comes amid growing concern about abuse on dating apps. This is one in four people in Britain have been body shamed online or on dating apps. And this is according to a Bumble survey of a thousand people. Additionally, 54% 54, 54 of people, they say are less likely to feel good after spending an extended time on the internet. Body shaming, uh, people feel self-conscious or insecure and angry. And these, of course, these are, this is body shaming makes people feel this way. And of course, this is particularly geared towards men. Again, like I've said before, that men, men having standards, no, no. Now, of course, this is not designed to, of course, basically put women back in line. Again, like I've said, the, the way that the app works is that the woman initiates the conversation. And so typically she's not entering into conversations with individuals that she's not attracted to. And so body shaming from the standpoint of the woman is less likely to take place unless, of course, the man outright um, just rejects her on the initiation of conversation which is probably what they're referring to. And so it's not women who are going around telling uh, men that they're not particularly interested in them. It's the men who are saying, I'm not interested in you because, um, because the person is deemed as being overweight. It says Bumble, which allows women to choose who they want to talk to, will use an algorithm to flag terms that are deemed derogatory in terms of mocking an aspect of someone's physical appearance. This will include language that is fat phobic, racist, or homophobic. Moderators will then uh, look through the accounts that have been flagged to determine whether any further um, actions such as the user needs to be banned or, or needs to take place. This is Bumble said in an updating guideline for its content moderators to provide specific guidance around body shaming. People who use language that falls into this category in their profile or through apps chat function will first receive a warning. So it might be like, for example, so you know, a man puts in his profile of the type of woman that he's after. He's like, I'm not, I'm not looking for women that are overweight. I'm not looking for women who are overweight. You know, I particularly like Hispanic. I, I'm looking for a thin Hispanic woman. Not really interested in dating outside my race uh, because I'm looking for someone who has similar cultures. And so for men to do that is considered shaming of some way, or you're considered racist. Or for example, like you say, well, I'm not looking to, um, to date someone who is um, trans. And of course that would make you transphobic. And so for men 
it, it seems that men are not allowed to have any sort of standards whatsoever. It's like whatever gets thrown at you, you're supposed to accept in any way, shape, or form. And any color that it comes from, and any color that the person comes in, whether they're male or female, you have absolutely no say in who you're allowed to date. Because if you reject a person for any way, shape, or form, then I guess you're considered some sort of phobic. It's really stupid that this is what this is why I don't even bother uh, at all with dating apps. It's much easier to meet people in person. Goes on to say, moderators will also share resources to help the individual learn how to change their behavior to be <clears throat> to be less harmful to others in the future. It says Naomi Walkland, this is Bumbleshead UK of Ireland, said that they wanted to create a much kinder, more respectful, and more equal space on the internet. And it's like some people just can't handle rejection. If you're not interested in them, then they become offended and they ask, well, why aren't you interested in me? And if you just say, well, I'm not really interested in Hispanic women, or I'm not interested in black women, or, you know, I'm not really interested in white women, or I like my women thin, or I like, white, or I like my women who are really fit. I go to the gym all the time. And so that's what I'm looking for. And apparently, if you were to say that in any way, shape or form, it would be deemed as unkind. And I would imagine disrespectful. And of course, would make people feel a certain way. And of course, if you're a man, then like I said before, uh, according to Bumble, you're not allowed to have any sort of standards, especially when it comes to body shaming. It says that is not acceptable uh, by Bumble. It says in 2018, Bumble introduced a feature that uses artificial intelligence to automatically detect and blur unsolicited nude images. It alters, it alerts the recipient who can choose to view, delete, or report the image. Bumble is also reviewing its photo moderation policy, um, uh, the app said. In 2016, the company banned shirtless bathroom, and of course, who was that by, right? It's typically shirtless. Women typically weren't going out there putting up shirtless. They were typically, it was typically men. What kind of men? Probably more than likely men who were in shape. Uh, mirror selfies and indoor photos in swimsuits that was probably by women and bras the company is now reviewing its photo guidelines and will be updating these it says uh, in 2016 consumer research survey on dating app users more than half of the women reported experiencing harassment compared to 26 20 percent of men in a 2017 uh, pew survey 21 percent of women aged 18 to 29 reported being sexually harassed online compared with only 9% of men in the same group. And of course, this is typically because men typically don't report things of sexual abuse. I mean, men get bombarded just as much as women do. If you're an attractive man, there's, you're constantly being, uh, you know, women are looking at you, hitting on you, touching you. Like women are much more touchy feely uh, than men are, especially in the workplace. You have other coworkers constantly. If you're, especially if you're in shape, there, there are individuals always touching you, rubbing your arms, etc. Uh, and of course, men typically don't report these things because it's just like part of their lives. But of course, from the female's perspective, this is more about how the individual feels, right? Harassment is more, especially the way, especially today, the way that it is uh, enforced is typically around how the person feels. Was the person unattractive that came up to you? Well, then you can say, well, it made me, it made me feel like the person was harassing me, right? Because I didn't want that, I didn't want that sort of attention. And so it, a person could easily just state, of course, that they're that they're being harassed. I will tell you an experience. I had a patient, um, I think it was about two weeks ago, and the patient was slightly agitated, but the guy spoke a different language and the PA comes around and they were like, because we had to move the patient to another room. And they wanted to medicate the patient. And I was like, well, if you, medi if you medicate the patient too much, the patient is going to become uh, lethargic, right? You're, going to basic you're basically going to give the patient too much medication. And I was like, and the person doesn't need it. The person's not agitated, easily redirected. And so I was like, I don't think it's a really good idea. I just don't think that that person will be a good match for who they wanted to pair him with. And so the PA, of course, was kind of pushing it. And I was like, hey, you do whatever you want to do. If something happens, I'm just going to write a keep safe. And a keep safe is just basically uh, like a, like letting you, look, management know that an event happened that took place. And of course, the patient was the one that experienced, uh, you know, the injury being uh, so basically being sedated. And so the person said, and the person, of course, was joking, but it was 
but just the way the person said it, I was like, what? And so the person goes, well, maybe I should go to HR and say you were harassing me. And I was like, what? I was like, here I am having a conversation about the well-being of my patient, not needing to be overly medicated and sedated just for the purpose of moving them. And this person, when I made the, the remark about if this went wrong, that you're the one that's going to be liable, was trying to basically turn around and say, well, if you go ahead, if you go ahead and do that, well, then I'm going to report you for sexual harassment. And I was like, wow. And this is why and this is particularly why I've said in numerous videos that when it comes to the work environment, I do not at all mess with women in any way, shape or form. I don't bother really having in-depth conversations. I don't go out. I don't go out to to after events when people invite me out. Um, I don't flirt with individuals. I, I typically don't even make much eye contact with many individuals of the opposite sex. Don't really have in-depth conversations. I don't exchange numbers with anybody. And it's primarily for this very reason, because this is basically an environment that you find yourself in as a man, especially if you're, if you're viewed by women as being attractive and you reject someone, that person can just say, you know, they didn't like the way that you rejected them, etc. And particularly on the man side, it's much more dangerous on your part where because listen and believe women never lie, et cetera. I was kind of shocked. And I, and I told a buddy of, my, uh, of mine at work and they were like, really? She said that. And I was just like, yeah. And I was like, I will never engage that person in any sort of conversation ever again, outside of, of course, documented through, you know, through the EMR system where I'll talk to that person just because you, just because you never know how someone is going to react and you never know, I, I can tell you experiences of you hurt someone's feelings. You think nothing of it as a man, someone gave you an attitude. You were like, whatever. And then that person goes and runs off to HR telling them that they, that you know, you, you had an attitude. They didn't like the way that you made them felt. You gotta be very careful nowadays as a man uh, in the workplace, especially when you're interacting with people of the opposite sex.